Hi, everybody. It's Deborah from PeopleLovingAnimals.com. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching my video today. Today's video is called, Is Pet Insurance Worth It for Cats? Uh, in today's video, we're going to, I'm going to give you a lot of information about pet health insurance. Mostly, we're going to be discussing how do you decide whether you should get pet health insurance for your cat? And also, uh, by the end of the video, I'm going to give you other resources as well. I'm going to give you access to uh, another um, article on my website, a uh, couple of articles on my website, and also another video. And I'm also going to give you uh, the link in the description box for a free checklist of questions you should ask before you get pet health. Uh, health insurance. So we're going to be going over a lot of information in today's video, and I hope I'm able to help you uh, with this decision to decide whether whether pet insurance is worth it for you and your cat. So again, thanks so much for watching. Let's go ahead and get started. If you've been here before, you know I own a website called PeopleLovingAnimals.com. We're on the website right now. I'm going to use this article called Is Pet Insurance Worth It for Cats for today's video. I'm not going to read the article to you. I'm basically using it to keep me on track so that I go over all the points that I want to cover with you. I am going to give you the link uh, to this article in the description box of today's video so you can go in and you can read it if you'd like to. And anything that we talk about in today's video, I will give you the links to in the description box. So please just go ahead and uh, relax and I hope you enjoy the video and I hope that you find it helpful. If you do, please give it a like. It really helps YouTubers when you do that. And also, if you're not already subscribed, I would appreciate it if you would um, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm trying to grow and um, well, there's a whole bunch of reasons why I want you to share the information and why I want you to subscribe, and it all benefits animals, and I'm going to tell you about that at the end of the video. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I personally have spent thousands of dollars over the last 35 years or so on medical expenses for my pets. Um, and strangely, for the first 15 years or so, um, kind of as, as an adult, I, uh, in, in my pet ownership, I didn't really have that many pet expenses. Like for years, you know, I had dogs, I had cats and nobody ever really needed anything. You know, I took them every year for their shots. Um, you know, occasionally they'd have a little something, but it really just wasn't ever, you know, that big a deal. And then I had my first, uh, big bill, uh, for a pet medical issue with this cat. Her name was Helmet Head. Uh, don't ask. There's a reason why that was her name. But I had that cat for 20 years. She lived for 20 years. Uh, but she was my first big um, vet expense. Uh, what happened was she started peeing uh, on the bathroom mat. And it was very strange because I'd had at that point I'd had the cat for 14 years and I had never had a problem with her. She was completely litter box trained. I never had a problem with her ever peeing anywhere else. And all of a sudden she started peeing on the bath mat. And so uh, I took her to the vet and it turns out she had a bladder crystal. And so um I don't know whether you've ever had a urinary tract infection, uh, same with a bladder crystal, any kind of bladder infection, it's going to hurt when you pee, okay? And my vet explained to me that that's what was happening with this cat. She she had a bladder um, crystal, uh, it hurt when she urinated, and he said in her little cat brain, she thought it had something to do with the litter box, <laughs> <laughs> um, so she was looking for other places to pee where it wouldn't hurt. You see, you know, cats don't really have like the logic that, that we do, but, um, you know, I took her to the vet, turns out she had a bladder crystal and, um, the surgery itself was $700 and the rest of it, the, you know, the vet visit, the urinalysis to find out she had an infection, you know, all these sorts of things added up to another, um, $300 or so. And so her issue cost me about a thousand dollars. Now, luckily that was when she was about 14 years old. Um, she did obviously survive it. She went on to thrive and, and have another, um, six years. She lived until she was 20 years old. Um, I also had um, a tomcat who actually was her his, her brother. His name was Myron, and he died of kidney disease. And I was very surprised that his cremation cost three hundred dollars. 
you know, I mean, just something like that, you know, I don't know, I don't mean to be morbid, but I'm just saying it, it was shocking to me when I first started to realize what medical uh, issues can cost for your animal and how you can just all of a sudden have this medical issue with your pet um, that you weren't expecting. Um, this particular cat uh, died at 20 years old of kidney disease. And um, for the last six months of her life, I was actually giving her fluids. I had like an IV bag like you'd have at the hospital with fluids in it. And every Sunday I'd sit down with her and I'd, I'd give her the needle and we would sit and I would give her fluids. And oh, I don't want to be morbid about this, but I'm just saying I'm coming from a place of experience when I when I'm talking to you about vet expenses and what they can add up to and that sort of thing. I just want you to have a realistic grasp of what we're talking about. Now, I know that this video is about um, cats, but I'll just fill you in on this little wiener dog. Her name is Taz. If you've been here before, you have heard me talk about her. Um, I did a video also called Is... Uh, pet insurance worth it for dogs. Um, if you're interested in that, go ahead and look on the YouTube channel under the pet health um, playlist and you'll see that video. And in that video, I, re I refer to Taz as my $20,000 dachshund. Uh, now, I had her for six and a half years and over that six and a half years, I spent $20,000 on medical bills for her. Um, she had Cushing's disease. She had uh, dental surgeries. She had allergies. She, she had all sorts of things. She eventually uh, passed away from... Um, congestive heart failure, which is a, a very expensive uh, disease. They can live several years with it, but it does take money to treat it. Um, and like I say, I refer to her as my $20,000 uh, dachshund. And I just want to give you another example of some of the experiences that I've had. This is my little cat named Abigail. Uh, I called her Miss Abigail. Um, she developed fatty liver disease and passed away sadly. She was only nine years old. Well, by the time uh, the cat started throwing up, from the time she first started throwing up to the time she passed away, it was only just, I want to say, a couple of months. Uh, the whole thing cost me 2900 bucks, And it was $2,900 that I spent to treat the cat, and I didn't have the cat in the end. She passed away from it. Um, so that was, uh, just very devastating for me and to have her, um, get this disease and, and everything. Uh, you know, I say here in the article in, um, capital letters, how I wish I had had pet insurance for these animals. Now, uh, maybe I was just oblivious, but for many years, like like I say, like those first 15 years that I was an adult and I never even heard about pet insurance. I, I don't know when it actually came into existence. I know it's become much more popular in recent years, but even then when I had these animals, I didn't I don't want to say that I didn't know that pet insurance existed. I guess I did, but I guess I just never really considered it. Like, I don't know. I don't, I have no excuse for my ignorance. I have no excuse, but had I had uh pet insurance, um, that many years ago, look at the money that I could have saved, <laughs> you know? So my short answer, well, if you call that short after all the talking I've just done, is pet insurance worth it for cats? My, my answer is yes. Uh, but we're going to talk uh, more in this video. Just stick with me and we're going to talk about how to make that decision. And I'm not just giving you a bunch of scary stuff here just so that you'll get scared and get pet insurance for your cat. It is a decision that you have to think through, and we're going to go over that in today's video. Now, in the um, article, uh, there's a little interruption, so I'm going to interrupt the video to invite you to receive this. Um, I'll give you the link in the description box. You can sign up to receive a printable list of 12 questions to ask before buying pet health insurance. I'll show that to you quickly. Here it is. It's on my website. It's a printable document, and it's 12 uh, questions that you should ask before you buy pet insurance. So if you decide, yes, I think I'm going to go ahead and get pet insurance for my cat, these are 12 questions you should ask uh, before you 
before you make that decision. Um, in case I forget, I'll mention it now. I'm also going to give you the link to this article that's on my website, Health Insurance for Pets, Everything You Need to Know. This is a very in-depth article. It includes a video um, and it goes over a lot more specifics about pet insurance itself. What does it cover? What doesn't it cover? What kind of policy should I get? All these sorts of things. And it's a lot of important information that you need to know if you are going if you do decide to get pet insurance for your cat. So I just want to mention that before I forget that I, I do have that as a resource for you. The video, Health Insurance for Pets, Everything You Need to Know, is on my YouTube channel under the pet health category, uh, or playlist rather. So I'm going to be giving you these uh, things as well to, to kind of help you with this whole process. Um, get pet insurance. Uh, like I said, I it was a major screw up for me uh, not to have pet insurance years ago um, because I did run into a lot of issues uh, with my pets um, where, you know, like for example, I told you that the one cat named Helmet Head, I had her for 14 years before I had any real medical expenses for her. Like I said, I had all the regular stuff. I took her for, I took her to the vet once a year. I, she got her shots every year, you know, that sort of thing. But I, for 14 years, I never had a problem with her. And then her brother, Myron, who I mentioned, he actually died of that uh, kidney disease. But again, he was 14. I don't know, 14 happens to be the the unlucky number for me. But again, I had him for 14 years before I had any major problems with him, you know, and then all of a sudden that happened. And then the dachshund named Taz, um, I adopted her, um, from a pet shelter. Um, and when I got her, the vet estimated that she was around eight years old. And, um, like I say, I'd had her for six and a half years and it was $20,000 worth of, you know, the dog was a mess. You know, she had all these issues and everything. And then I get this little cat, Abigail, and, you know, I just adopted her and she was a sweet little cat. And for nine years, I didn't have any medical issues with her. And then all of a sudden she develops fatty liver disease and um, passes away from it. And it cost me uh, $2,900. So I'm just saying, you know, it was a major screw up for me that I didn't, consider this a priority and make sure that if I was going to decide to get a pet, that I also made the decision to put a line in my budget for um, pet insurance. And you're going to find out it's not that expensive. Um, pet insurance is, it doesn't have to be a lot of money. Um, we'll get to that in, in a minute. But anyway, let me just give you a couple recommendations. Um, there are two pet health insurance companies that I recommend on my website, peoplelovinganimals.com. One is called Healthy Paws. Um, there is a, a full review of it. Um, I'm going to give you the link here. You says you can read my full review about it here and get information and a free quote here. They'll give you a free quote. There is um, a full review on my website. I'll give you the link to that in the description box. Um, and I, I write in the article that, um, I'm sorry, I'm a little distracted because something I thought was in this article is not, um, the other recommendation that I have for you is called pet plan. Let me just show it to you in my other article and that article about health insurance that I'm going to give you. Um, I recommend healthy pause and I also recommend pet plan. Okay, pet plan. This is what I was looking for in the other article. Um, I'll give you uh, the links to both of these companies. They'll both give you a free quote. And I um, researched pet health insurance companies. And these are two that I'm very happy uh, to recommend to you. They are good companies there. And there's lots of good uh, reasons why I recommend them. Like I say, in the description box, I'll give you my link for my full review of the Healthy Paws Pet Insurance Company. And I'll give you the link for my full review of Pet Plan. Okay. I'm sorry, I was stuttering so much. Uh, like I said, you can go in and read this article if, if you would like to. I talk about the fact that pet insurance is becoming more uh, popular. Um, is it pet insurance right for you and your cat? Um, 
It comes down to a financial decision. We're going to talk about that in a minute, but I, I need to make yet another morbid point. I'm sorry to do it to you, but these are, you know, when you, when you learn something the hard way, don't you just want to share it with people? And that's, that's kind of the whole purpose for my video today is I learned the hard way and I just wish that I would have known some things, you know, years ago that would have saved me not only a lot of money, but a lot of grief and stuff. Um, you don't want to end up in a decision where something is happening with your cat. Your cat can get treatment and survive whatever it is that's happening. And you don't have the financial resources to be able to pay for that. Um, my vet referred to it as economic euthanasia. That was the term that he came up with when he, um, in his 60 some years practicing as a vet, he had put so many animals down. When the medical technology was there, they could have been saved. They could have had surgery. They could have had treatment. They could have had medication or whatever. But the owner had no choice but to put the animal down because they simply could not afford to pay for that animal's medical care. And that's one of the biggest reasons um, why I'm going to strongly recommend to you that you do get health insurance for your cat because you never want to be there at the vet's office. It's bad enough your cat is sick. It's bad enough you're at the vet. It's bad enough your cat's upset. He's sick. You had to take him to the vet. You know, it, it's bad enough if your cat has had an accident or is injured in some way or has just received um, a scary diagnosis. All of it is bad enough without having to worry about the damn money. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, I just, if that's an important point to consider. Do, you know, do I want to be in that position where I have to make decisions for my pet based on money, do you know? Um, and like I say, it really comes down to a financial decision. Um, do you have the money to pay for something should something happen to your cat? Uh, now, for example, if you have a cat, and you can easily afford to take that cat to the vet every year. You can easily afford the cat's shots. Um, if the cat had, say, for example, a urinary tract infection, I had a girlfriend whose um, cat had a simple urinary tract infection. And I took the cat to the vet for her because she had to work and it was just easier. I took the cat. Uh, and, you know, the vet did an exam. They did a urinalysis, found out the cat had the infection. Um, the cat was sent home with antibiotics. 300 bucks. 300 bucks, the whole thing, for a simple urinary tract infection. Now, if you could easily afford that 300 bucks, then maybe you don't need pet insurance. Do you know? Um, what if your dog got, or I'm sorry, what if your cat got injured? What if they got hit by a car? What if something happened? What if they had cancer? What if they had key lime, uh, key lime, feline leukemia? <laughs> it was a big slip up. You know, what if they were diagnosed with something or something serious happened and it was going to be $5,000? for the cat to receive treatment. Could you pay for it? Well, if you say, yeah, you know, if my cat had something and it was going to cost $5,000 and I could pay for it, I have money in savings. I have, you know, plenty of room on my credit cards. I could easily pay that back. Um, I'm a wealthy person. You know, if that's the case, then maybe you don't need pet health insurance for your cat. Do you know, it comes down to a financial decision where would you be able to pay the medical expenses if something happened to your cat. Um, here's another important point that, again, I learned the hard way. Um, having health insurance for your cat helps prevent you from hesitating to take them to the vet. Now, I don't like to think about this much because it's painful for me to think about it. But for example, little Miss Abigail, the little black kitten I showed you, died of fatty liver disease. Well, she started throwing up. That was my first indication that something was wrong with the cat. Well, she threw up for a couple of days, not constantly, but it's like, oh, geez, the cat threw up. And it's like, well, first of all, I discovered that the cat has thrown up. I had two cats, so I don't know who, I don't know who burfed. And if, if you're a cat owner, you know, cats burf, you know, they vomit, they do hairballs. And so they really didn't think it was that weird. You know, it's like the first day she vomits and then the next day and I'm like, okay, the cat is vom vomiting. And then, then you're like, okay, well, do I take her to the vet? Then there's a terrible, stressful time where you as a pet owner, you don't know what to do. 
do you take her to the vet? Do you call the vet every time the cat barfs? Do you call the vet every time the dog's acting weird? Like you just don't know. Do you call, do you call the vet? Do you take, and you know, for most animals, cats, especially going to the vet is very upsetting for them. <laughs> they don't like it. They don't want to be in the carrier. They want to be in the car. They're terrified of the vet. So as a pet owner, you're just really in turmoil. You don't even know what you should call the vet. But it also becomes a financial issue. If you're someone who can't afford to just, you know, oh, I'm just going to take the cat to the vet and I don't know how much it's going to cost. If you're somebody that can't afford that, then you hesitate, don't you? And I did with Abigail. It's like, uh, I'm going to just hope that this passes. I'm just going to hope she's okay. I really can't afford to take her to the vet. And and then you're worried, what if it is something? How much is it going to cost? And, and you just, you hesitate to take them to the vet for financial reasons. So a big point I want to make is if you have pet health insurance, you're not going to hesitate to take your animal to the vet. Now, the reason I say I, I don't like to think about this with Abigail is that what if I had taken her that first day? I don't know. I don't know if the cat would have survived the fatty liver disease if I had taken her one day sooner. I don't know. But like I say, I hate to think about it because I think, what if I had, you know? So it's just, a, like I said, live and learn. I learned that the hard way. And it's one more reason to have um, pet health insurance so that you're not not taking the pet to the vet because you're afraid of the money, Okay. Uh, what are the different types of policies? We talk about this in the article, and um, I talked to it, about it at, uh, more at length in my um, health insurance, everything you need to know video. Um, basically, the short version is um, health insurance for pets is very similar to health insurance for people. You know, the cost of our health insurance premiums is based on our size of our deductible, um, your age, all these different factors. And you can get a super expensive monthly premium and your health insurance covers everything. You don't have any co-pays. You don't have to pay for prescriptions. You know, like the Cadillac version of health insurance, you can pay that and you pay a high monthly premium. You can also have like bare minimum insurance that maybe covers emergencies and illnesses and that sort of thing, but it doesn't cover just your annual visits and it doesn't cover just your regular annual immunizations and all that sort of stuff. Do you see? So now in my uh, article, Health Insurance for Pets, Everything You Need to Know, in that uh, video, I uh, go over in more detail about the different types of um, policies that you can get. And there are um, Cadillac versions, expensive monthly premiums, and there are super cheap versions. I know that Pet Plan has policies that start at $10 a month. So, you know, you can get an inexpensive policy that you just want to have in case something big happens to your animal. Okay. That, you know, if nothing else, you might want to just go ahead and get that. Just get the you know, the cheapest policy they have, see what kind of coverage you can get. And you, you might want to just make that decision and say, you know what, I'll pay for my cat's monthly, uh, or not monthly, annual vet visits. Um, you know, if my cat gets a urinary tract infection, if something happens, if, if she has an infection and she needs a couple weeks worth of antibiotics, like, okay, I can, I can pay for that stuff. You know, I don't need pet insurance to cover that. So I can pay for that stuff. But if something big happens, I really wouldn't be able to pay for for it. And so that for that reason, I would like to get pet health insurance. So you might want to just get a policy that doesn't, it isn't Cadillac policy, doesn't cover everything, you know, but there are choices. Uh, again, there's an interruption in the article. So I'm going to interrupt the video to invite you to subscribe to my cat lovers email list. I do have a dog lovers email list. I have a cat lovers email list. I'll give you the link in the description box of this video to sign up for the cat lovers email list. Um, if you subscribe to that, you get a free gift, which is a free pet training manual. It's how to solve bad cat behavior. You get that as a little free gift. And also, if you're subscribed to that email list about once a week or so, you'll get a an email from peoplelovinganimals.com and it'll be all about cats, um, pet uh, care for your cat, health issues for your cat, um, training issues for your cat, all sorts of things. I hope that you'll subscribe and I hope that you'll find that uh, useful. 
Uh, like I said, I talk a little bit more at length in this article about some of the policies. Some of them um, will pay for illness. Some of them will pay for accidents. Um, you need to choose your policy based on you know what you want your premium amount to be. You can get, get for example, a percentage of reimbursement. Like you can get 70% reimbursement, 80% reimbursement, 90% reimbursement. Now, obviously, all of that affects the premium. You know, you might you're going to pay more per month for a policy that covers 90% of stuff. You're going to pay less per month for a policy that only covers 70%. But like I say, you do the math, you figure it out. Watch my other videos. I'll, I'll help you kind of walk through that stuff. Some have max payouts where they put a cap on how much they'll pay per policy or how much they'll pay per illness, that sorts of thing. And again, the 12 questions list that I give you the link to in the description box, these are some of the questions that you want to ask the insurance companies before you make a decision and buy a policy. These are things you need to know ahead of time, okay? Uh, things to consider when buying pet uh, health insurance, don't wait by early for two reasons. One is the younger your pet is, the cheaper, cheaper your premium is going to be. And the second reason is uh, pet health insurance, just like people health insurance, won't pay for a pre-existing illness. Okay, so if you already, if your cat is already, uh, oh, I'll wait. If my cat gets cancer, I'll get pet health insurance. Guess what? If your cat's already been diagnosed with cancer, you're not going to be able to get insurance uh, you're going to be able to get pet insurance, but it, they're not going to cover that illness. It's called a pre-existing illness. You may have heard of that before for humans. So by get sooner rather than later is better uh, to get it. Understand how the policy works. Like I said, know what you're getting. Um, and again, I, I keep I hate to keep saying the same thing over again, but I, I really want you to read the other article, read this article, watch the other video that I give you so that you have a good understanding of how it works, what the policies are, what you're getting, what you need to know. I don't want you to have any surprises. Uh, I want you to really understand your policy and make the best choice for you, not only just based on your budget and how much you can afford to pay for a monthly premium, but how much it's worth it to afford. Or, or how much it's worth it to pay for a premium. You don't want to pay huge premium for a policy that has all this stuff that you don't even really need. You know, you don't want to overpay either. So again, I'm going to ask you to take all the resources I'm giving you and um, make a really good decision. Here's uh, something to think about. Don't think of pet insurance as an investment. When you think about is pet insurance worth it for cats, it's not an investment. It's not something you, you're looking to make money on. It's not even something you're looking to break even on. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You shouldn't be looking to profit on it or even to um, break even on it or to get your money's worth. It's like, oh, if I'm going to pay, you know, $10 a month for the premiums, that's $120 a year. Well, are they going to pay for $120 a year worth of stuff? I don't know. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. That shouldn't be the basis for your decision. Your, your decision should be, um, getting a pet insurance policy that covers what you would need to be covered if it happened to do it within a monthly premium that you can afford and so that you aren't financially devastated if you adopt a $20,000 wiener dog like I did. Do you know what I mean? Like the whole point is to get insurance. Like for example, when you consider car insurance and house insurance, do you ever get your money's worth? No, no. You know, you own your house for 30 years. You pay a monthly insurance premium uh, to insure your house in 30 years, the likelihood your house isn't going to burn down. Now, likely is you're not going to have a house fire, for example. So did you, did that pay off? No. But the reason you have the insurance is that if that did happen, you don't want to be devastated. Did you see? Same with car insurance. You know, you can drive a car for five years and you pay a monthly premium every single month for insurance for that car. And in that five years, never have an accident, never have an accident. Cars never damaged. That insurance company made out great. They didn't have to put out a dime for your car. Or maybe one time your windshield broke and they fixed it. But over five years of premiums, this is how much I put in for premiums. And they, re you know, they spent 200 bucks to replace my windshield. Ah, oh, this isn't worth it. This didn't pan out. Do you know, that's, that's incorrect thinking. That's, that's not the reason you have car insurance. You pay the monthly premium on your car insurance in case something happened to your car so that you won't be devastated. And 
the same thing with house insurance, you know, same thing with uh, health insurance for you. Um, you know, you can go for years. Um, I'm personally a very blessed person. I haven't had, I, I don't take any medications. I, I don't have issues. I was like, well, that's real great. But I still have to have health insurance because what if I did? What if I broke my leg? What if I got cancer? What if I had heart disease? What if this, do you know what I mean? So it's like pet insurance is no different than any other insurance. Insurance, You get it to ensure that you won't be financially devastated if things happen. Uh, my recommendations, uh, here they are. Healthy Paws is my uh, first recommendation. Um, they are best known for their exceptional customer service. There's a nice video here in the article where the owner of Healthy Paws is interviewed. And I, I really liked the interview. And I like him and I like what the company stands for. And I just think they're a good company. And that's why I recommend them on my website. And like I say, the second one that I recommend is Pet Plan. Um, they are one of the largest uh, providers of pet health insurance in the world. They do have policies that start at $10 a month. And they have a nice video that I went ahead and put in this article, too, that you can click into and, and watch if you'd like to find out some more um, information about them. Um, I put in the article, we need to catch up in the USA Um this has been growing uh, rapidly in recent years, um, but I was shocked to find out that more than half of all pets in the UK have pet insurance. <laughs> where where was this information when I adopted the $20,000 dachshund? Like, how do they know about that? You know, obviously it's just considered a priority there, like much more than it's considered here in the United States. You know, I'm just saying... <laughs> Oh, I wish I would have uh, been on board with all of this. Okay, I'm I'm going to stop talking very quickly. I appreciate you watching the video for this long. Um, let me tell you a couple of things before we go. First of all, if you have not been here before, you don't know this. I donate to animal charities. Um, PeopleLovingAnimals.com is my job. It's what I do for a living. And the way that I do it for a living is I look for products and services that benefit my viewers and recommend them on my website. Like for example, I'm doing an article and a video for you today, helping you to decide whether pet health insurance is right for your cat. And so I searched out pet health insurance companies. I researched, I decided which ones I would recommend. And then I applied to be an affiliate for those companies. They give me an affiliate link. And then if you click that, if you go through my link to purchase that uh, health insurance, I get a small commission. Okay. That's how affiliate marketing works. Um, and I donate 10% of all of the commissions that I earn to animal charities. If you go to the homepage of my website, peoplelovinganimals.com, you'll see a list of the uh, charities that I donate to. So if you do decide that you're going to get pet health insurance for your cat, if you do decide to go through one of these companies that I recommended to you today, and if you use the links I'm giving you in the description box or within the reviews, um, I will get a small commission. It's how I do this for a living, and I will donate 10% of that commission to animal charities. Okay. So I hope that I've given you some help here. Uh, like I said, in the description box of this video, I'm going to give you the link to this article. I'm going to give you a link to the 12 questions to ask before buying pet uh, health insurance. I'm going to give you a link to this article, uh, health insurance for pets, everything you need to know. I'm also going to give you a link to go ahead and subscribe to the uh, cat lovers email list if you would like to. And uh, speaking of subscribing, if you're not already subscribed to this channel, I would love it if you uh, would subscribe. Um, also, I'm going to ask you if you would please share this video, share my website, peoplelovinganimals.com with your friends and family who have either dog or cats, dogs or cats. Um, I, I would really appreciate it. And I've been doing this since 2015. There are hundreds of articles uh, on my website uh, that help people uh, to be a better pet owner. And so I'm asking you to please um, refer uh, to your friends and family who have a dog or a cat. And like I say, 10% um, of all of the commissions that I earn goes to help animals um, and animal charities. So 
Go ahead and comment if you have any questions, if you have any experiences that you would like to share that would um, help people to decide, yay or nay, whether they should get um, health insurance for their cat, please go ahead and comment. I would appreciate, I would appreciate your feedback. Again, thanks so much for watching. I hope this has helped. My name is Deborah, and my website is peoplelovinganimals.com. Thanks again. Bye-bye.